in this session, we're going to talk about the survey testing tools. This is one of the most important parts of your survey creation process. This will allow you to QA your survey and see exactly what a respondent is going to see. This way you can validate everything that will be appearing to your respondent, how their survey is working, if your hidden questions or hidden variables are being set. You can also test different page paths or even just aesthetics for your survey as well. This will give you the ammunition to go back into the build and edit tool so that you can make any adjustments as you see fit. In this series, we're going to show you how to access your survey links for testing. We'll show you how to use the navigation options within the survey testing tools to be able to skip around and test specific parts of your survey. We'll also show you how to use the tasks option as well as some other features that will allow you to perform some quality assurance while testing. We'll also run through the session options so that you know exactly what's happening when you're testing since the system uses cookies and cache. In this session, we're going to discuss how to access the test links for your survey. There's a couple of different reasons why you'd want to use the test link and gain access to them. The first is to be able to actually test your survey and see what a respondent would see with some built-in uh, testing tool features that are only available to folks using the testing links. You can provide these links to internal folks within your organization and or to maybe an end client as an example. Anybody with the link will be able to utilize it and test through the survey. So let's see how to gain access to those particular survey links. A couple different ways to do so through the navigation. I'm currently on the build and edit tool here. If I click on uh, the words build and edit at the top you can see there's a little arrow pointing downward which will get you access to the navigation menu. So here I can select one of two options either A preview and test. If I click on preview and test this is going to give you the default testing tools for the specific link which is your default. The other option is to click on survey links on the, the next column over. If I click here this will take me to the survey dashboard and under the fielding tab again same menu just flipped in the other direction so it's vertical here instead of horizontal as you saw in the build and edit tool just to save room. So if I click on survey links this is where I'll end up. So the live links are at the top, test links are at the bottom, and you'll see that there are multiple links. So here I'm just highlighting these two particular items just to show that there are always going to be two sets of links, a live link and a test link. So here I have the language and country combination, the locale, and the sample source. So it's a combination of the two, creating a more unique um, survey link for that particular use case. So I'll have the live link there, test link down here at the bottom, and I'll always have those two options. If I wanted to select a specific one, so let's say as an example, I have five languages happening on this particular project and I have them all listed out, I can copy and paste the specific test link to be able to test it in that language or provide it to somebody who's going to be able to understand it in that language so that they can provide feedback and or edits and updates to the, the text and or content. That's a good use case for needing to know how to get specific testing links. But again, you can provide any of these links to, again, internal folks within your organization or external folks, meaning possible uh, end client for their review. If I click on this first link, just as a test, I will be sent to the survey and you will see that there is a menu or testing tools on the far right hand side. These will only appear for folks using the testing link. If you were using the live link, these would not appear nor would the question names and or numbers up at the top left. 
and or the autofill options depending on the question type here as well. So pretty much this top row, the question number and the autofill option would not appear, nor would the testing tools on the far right hand side appear to a real respondent. Depending on if you're giving the link to a person who is a current CMIX user or a non-CMIX user, there might be some different options that are not available. So as an example, if I provide a link to an internal person who has access uh, to CMIX, meaning they have a login, and they are not logged into the system, but again, they do have a login, uh, they would be limited to a couple of different options. So they would not be able to use the task feature, which we'll go into in a future session, as well as the edit page content feature. So these two particular options would not be available to a CMIX user who has a login but is not currently logged in. These two would not be available. If you are sending this link to a person who does not have a CMIX login whatsoever, meaning usually end client, then these two options definitely would not appear whatsoever. Um, Actually, they'd be, they'd be grayed out, so they wouldn't. So you can see the edit page content is is grayed out currently. The same uh, thing would happen for the edit and add tasks. So these two would be grayed out and not available. They would appear, but not available. And as you can see up here, we still have access to that same menu that we have on the survey project list screen or the the launch pad. So if I click on that again, same menu. If I needed to go somewhere else, go back to the survey links, I can do so from here. Or if I was on the uh, CMIX launchpad, I could go here. Maybe I'm logging in for the first time uh, during the day, and I just wanted to click on here and preview and test it or go to my survey links. I'll be able to do that, no problem. So this is a general tutorial on how to A, access the testing links, and B, a general overview of what may or may not appear uh, for users depending on if they have logins or not, and if they're logged into the system or not. We'll go into some more details on some of these additional options in some future sessions. In this session, we're going to discuss the survey navigation options within the survey testing tools. I am currently on a testing link session where I have already answered punch two to Q1. And normally I would just hit next to continue. So now I go to Q4 in this particular case. I may want to go backwards to re-answer a question and then continue forward to see how that changes any of the operations throughout the survey. By default, the Live respondents do not get a back button, but using the testing tools, there is one inherently built into it. So if I look over to the right in the navigate survey section, there are three buttons available. The second one, it looks like a rewind button, uh, two triangles pointing to the left. If I click on that button and, or even hover over it, it says back one page. So if I click on it, I will go back. And the reason why it's going from Q4 to Q1 is because there looks like there was probably a skip pattern involved here in which I'm going from Q1 to Q4. So I just went back. If I wanted to, I could also go forward. What the forward button will do is automatically answer any question with the autofill capability on this particular page. So auto answer this question and hit the next page button for me. This is a good use case in which if you're just trying to test through a survey, maybe a screener and you just need answers to a number of questions, um, maybe you've already tested very, very thoroughly so you know that they're all right, you can just come in here and click on this button that says auto fill page and continue button, which is the third button over and continue with your survey without having to click or answer anything on the page. Now, not all of the questions have this autofill option, so you may be in a scenario in which either A, you have a question by itself that doesn't have this functionality built into it, 
So it's not going to autofill and continue. You'd have to manually answer the question. Or if you have multiple questions on the same page, maybe a couple of them do have the autofill option and maybe one doesn't. So you, those two will be auto answered, but the one that does not, you'd have to answer manually and hit, hit the next page button to continue. So if I continue to hit that fast forward button, it'll just randomly answer and then I just got to the end. Again, I can go backwards using that back one page and test maybe in this particular case, there's only one option uh, because it's just a very rudimentary example. But if there were multiple options, you could change your, your response and then continue to see if any behavior changes. Another option uh, is if you are testing the survey and maybe you're changing some look and feel options within the survey, maybe you changed your theme or you changed uh, some CSS within a specific question, you can just click on the refresh button within the testing tools and that will refresh the page. If you refresh the button in the, using the browser, then you'll have to start over. It's going to um, clear your session and you'll most likely have to start again at Q1. This will just refresh the page itself using the testing tools. So it's a good way to make modifications in a survey just for look and feel and then come back to the survey itself. So you can go back and forth between the build and edit and the actual survey to see what it looks like just by using the refresh button here. Another option you can utilize is the skip to feature. This one is a great feature because it will allow you to skip to a specific page or question. So if again, maybe I have tested my full screener. I don't need to answer any of that. I just want to get to a specific question. Maybe it's Q5. I can start typing in Q5 and this autofill dropdown will filter the options out that are not applicable. So if I want to skip to Q5, I can click on that and then you'll have two options. Uh, the default is instant where it even tells you that it's the fastest but does not autofill in questions with test data, meaning that all of the questions in between are just going to be blank. You're just really skipping to that specific question in this particular case uh, to get there and answer it and maybe see usability or anything like that. But no answers will be filled in for anything prior to this question. That's the default. Uh, you do also have the ability to autofill answers with a test data template if you've created one. We'll go into the test data template setup in a future session as well. Um, but just for now, I'm going to leave it as instant again, which is the default. I'll click on go and it'll just get me directly to Q5. I can go back again. And if maybe I do not want to skip to Q5, maybe I type in the number four as an example. You'll have Q4 or page four use cases for the page versus question is mainly because if page four is a logic page, maybe you've answered a couple of questions to this point and you want to skip to page four, which in theory could be a logic page and you need those items to execute, you can skip to that logic page and then continue with the survey. If you skipped to a question directly after page four, as an example, anything in between would not execute. So that page four logic would not ever happen. It would be ignored completely. So if you need to skip to a logic page to make sure those particular items do happen, then you can use the page feature. So those are both good use cases of being able to skip to a page or skip to a question. And that is the way to use the navigation section of the testing tools. In this session, we're going to cover the quality assurance options of the survey testing tools. I'm currently in a testing session right now. Let's say, as an example, you are sharing your testing link with a person within your organization that's going to help you test the survey and provide feedback. As long as they're logged into the system and have been using the link, they will be able to leave some tasks directly in the system for you. 
So as an example, let me test through. And right now I'm skipped to Q4, but there's no question text, no response options, just one. So clearly this doesn't look like it's been fully programmed properly. I, as the other party, can go in and while testing, click on the edit slash add tasks button on the right hand side and add a new task. What this will do is build in a what looks to be an email type system, uh, but it's really just a, a running list or a running total of any sort of content that you want to leave for yourself or for the primary programmer as feedback for that person to review and or update or follow up on. So here I've added a task and it says attention needed on page six. So this is pretty much the subject line. I can change this if I wanted to and maybe say Q4. I don't have to because it's inherently already says what it, the page that this particular question is on. But I can change that if I see fit. Leave a note and say something to the effect of there, there was no question text and only one blank response option. Add task. And now I can see here that there is uh, only one task. I can continue to add more here right now, or I can close out, continue to test. Maybe I'll answer it, hit the next button. Q5 is the same thing. Maybe I want to add another task and say Q5. I can even type that in here and leave the attention and the subject line up here as is. So Q5 missing question text. Now I have two. I can still access them at any point too. If I clicked on this button, I can click on that Q4 to review it. There was no question text and one blank response option. I can make any sort of comments back and add my comment or I can update the status. Uh, you have open, complete, or declined. So I can escape out of here if I needed to. And you can see now there are two open tasks. It gives you a running tally of how many open tasks there are. So I can either go through myself and test and leave notes for myself, or again, pri provide the link to a colleague. They go through, they do their, their testing, and they add their feedback within the, the tasks feature. So a great value add so that you don't have to worry about sending emails back and forth with bulleted lists. Maybe you test one path of your survey and you have a number of pieces of feedback for the, the person who's in charge of the project. You go through, maybe you test again later on in the day. Maybe you didn't have time or you had a meeting that you had to jump on and you had to get away from the survey for a little bit. You can come back and continue to add tasks as you see fit. Now the primary programmer or the person who's in charge of the project can either A, access them the same way I did here. I can just click on the test link, go here and click on edit, add tasks and I can see the list. Or I can use my navigation uh, button or menu and go to the tasks. It's its own feature. So if I click on that, this will send me the survey dashboard. You can see the task is two with the little red indicator here. So it gives you a counter so that it, it's very obvious to you that there are open tasks sitting here waiting. So let's say for example, I've got two open ones here. I can click on any one of them. Maybe I made the update. Um, I can leave a note to that effect. Made the update all set. And then I can Mark this as complete. Add the comment. So now you can see there's a little bit of a status change and the counter decreases by one. And again, you can use this in a number of different ways. Some folks even use this to add a task by default and maybe upload your questionnaire to it. 
if it's a very large file, it might not work. Um, but I have seen in the past where folks have uploaded their questionnaire to a task, so it's here. Um, and if, for example, I am on vacation as the primary programmer, somebody takes it on and makes the updates to keep the project moving while I'm away, they can come in here and either leave the notes or I can leave that questionnaire for that person or leave any sort of communication back and forth uh, between myself and the, the person in charge of the project. And again, I can still add new tasks up here. And to this effect, I can also go into the build and edit tool and up here, if I refresh, I'm in the build and edit tool here. On the very top right, there is a little chat looking icon. These are the, this is a link to the, the tasks as well. You can see there is a counter here too. If I click on here, while I'm physically programming, I also have the ability to add tasks, modify them, close them, review them, and so forth. So this is available within the survey dashboard. It's within the build and edit tool, and it's within the survey testing tools. So this is a, a great value add so that you'll be able to keep track and collaborate and even make notes for yourself. Now, if I go back to the preview and test, I can then also, if this has been enabled by default, you can see that the edit page content button here is uh, grayed out by default. Uh, that's because it's off on every survey by default, but I can have this turned on if I have access to the build and edit tool. So I'm going to go in to the build and edit tool, click on my survey settings, go to manage survey, and I'm going to turn on this option labeled allow text edits while testing. So if I toggle this on, go back to my testing tools, I'll refresh here. Now the option is available. Now this option is again only available to folks who have a CMix login and are logged in. The reason for that is because if somebody is not logged in or they don't have a login to the system at all, there's no way for us to log this transaction or this activity. Because what this is going to allow me to do is if I click on, so I'm on Q5, I uh, just got a blank uh, response option here. I can click on edit page content. And right now, there's nothing uh, available here. But if I go back to my built-in edit tool for Q5, I can show you the specific use case. It has to have content by default is really what the scenario is. So if I have some text in here and I'll put in some text here. And if I go to my preview and test, I'll refresh. So now I have content. I just made that up. Uh, I can click on the edit page content. And now you can see uh, Q5 question text. I can update that to whatever that should be. Uh, do you like this product? And the response option was only one, um, so I'll say yes. Now it says it's updated after I clicked on update content and close out. The screen will refresh, so now I have actually updated the text for both the question text and the response option while I'm testing my survey. The reason why the option is off by default is because in theory you could have multiple people testing the survey at the same time and if myself or a colleague are testing at the same time and both make edits to the content at the same time most most likely this is not going to be the case but there, or there's going to be some at least seconds in between the updates uh, but in theory if we're both in here we both go to make edit uh, page content option um, option changes here 
whoever saved their update last will be the one who ultimately gets their content saved in the question. So if I was there first, I made my updates, but within a very close proximity of time, colleague comes in, clicks on that button, they make edits too, maybe because either A, I haven't saved it while they clicked on the edit button or something in, in that of that nature, they might still see the blank content or content that's incorrect because my save hasn't happened yet or they haven't refreshed because of when they landed on the page. They might not see it, so they might enter text that might be different than what I entered in. So that is the reason why it's off by default. I would say it is a good feature. I would say to proceed with caution with it uh, and or at least make sure to be in constant communication with the folks who might be internally testing and providing feedback or using this feature with you. Uh, so maybe let's say plan it ahead of time so that if my colleague I know, hey, can you start testing this survey at 10 a.m. please, I will be away from it so you can go in and make your updates or changes or what have you. You could do it that way. Again, you do not have to use this feature. Uh, again, it is off by default. You can turn it on if you want to, or you can just utilize the, the task feature to just have that communication back and forth instead of using this edit page content. Another use case would be maybe I turn it on while I am the primary programmer. I make the content changes myself. I don't tell anybody or I've not shared the content, the link, uh, the survey testing link with anybody else yet. Um, and I make my edits while I am physically testing. And then I turn it back off so that my colleagues do not have this feature because I give them the testing link later on in the day, maybe the next day. So I'll turn off the, the functionality. I've made it and used it the way I see fit, turn it off, and then provide the link to colleagues to test. Also another option there too. The last option in the quality assurance section is the view response log. So right now I'm on Q5. If I wanted to, I can click on this view response log to review the answers to any of the questions that I've answered to this point. So great use case for this is, let's say I have tested a very long survey, maybe it's 100 questions long. I answered some random questions or used the autofill feature within the screener, but that logic tied to the responses in that section are required for logical operations that happen way later in the survey, maybe question 50, question 60, something of that nature. You'd either have to write that down to or memorize it, and sometimes you forget or you have to, you're pulled away, you have to go into a meeting or something of that nature. You then have to uh, try to memorize what happened or really start your test all over from scratch because you don't remember what the answers were. This feature will allow you to see what the answer was. So if I needed Q1 to know what happened at Q1, I can say Q1 was set to 2. And Q4 was set to 1. So I, if I have any sort of logic or skip patterns or anything like that, I can just click on this review response log, and then I will be able to see what the answers were and confirm or deny whether or not the necessary steps were taken, meaning that skip pattern happened, termination happened, anything of that nature. So this will be extremely helpful to you in your testing. This has been a review of the quality assurance features within the survey testing tools. In this video, we're going to discuss the session options within the survey testing tools. There are two options available, restart test and end test. Restart test will allow you to just start from the beginning. So let's say I answer some questions and for whatever the reason I want to start over, I can just click on reset test. And then I'll start over. 
The other option is to click on end test, which will uh, clear the session and tell you to close out of your browser or tab. The reason these buttons are important is because the system is tied to temporary cookies and cache. So if you try to come back and take a survey again without clicking on either of these buttons, what would happen is you would most likely pick up where you left off, even though you want to start over from scratch. So if you wanted to do so, you can click on that restart test and it will clear you out and you start from the beginning or you click on end test and end your session altogether and then you can close your, your browser tab. These are also very useful if you are trying to test your live link and if you are doing that multiple times, you might fall in that same scenario in which the cookies and cache have sent you to the same page or the same question where you left off from a prior live session. So if you come back here, click on restart test or end test, it'll clear the temporary cookies and cache and then you can start your live test over again as well. The other option that usually helps in that regard if you're trying to test uh, the live link for any specific sort of reason is using an incognito browser so that those cookies and cache uh, are not saved. Then you'll get a better understanding of what it would look like or what the use case is when you're testing your survey. And that is the way the session piece works of the, the system as a whole as well as in the, the testing tools. In this session, we're going to cover one of the most important parts of CMEX, the review outline. This is one of the most important parts of the system because it will allow you to do some QA checks on your survey before you go live or even after. To access the review outline, I'm going to click on the build and edit text at the top from the build and edit tool to access the navigation menu, and I'm going to select review outline. This is also available from the launchpad by clicking on the navigation menu here or from within the server dashboard I can click on review outline. These will all take you to the same place. The review outline is a one page scrolling document of your entire survey. This includes any questions, any question settings that you might have updated, logic, quotas, text, anything that's been programmed. Internally, what we do as part of the QA process is compare your usually Word document or Excel file sometimes, depending on which method the questionnaire is written in, and compare that side by side to the review outline. This will allow you to see if you can find any inconsistencies or things that might have been added that might have been omitted in the edits process. So I am now scrolling through this particular survey's review outline. I can see the Q1 is a radio question. If I continue to scroll, I see a logic page and this is just a termination point so if I would just verify that if q1 equals 1 which is q1 equals 1 which is male term using this code then on page 3 I see an invalid setting this is one of the most important parts of this the review outline it will actually provide you with this invalid setting notification when you're reviewing it to know that in this particular case I was trying to set a question but it's not been set, set properly so if I go back to the build and edit tool and review I can just refresh just to make sure I'm looking at the right thing I'll go to logic page 3 so I can go back logic page 3 and I see that my logic block says only if Q1 equals 2 set question and then it's blank. So I, for, I forgot to 
actually finish the rest of my my logical operation and that's why it's an invalid setting so now i can go here and maybe set it q2 to just making this this up just so that something appears now if i go back to the review outline and update it i now see that the invalid setting is gone and it's saying set q2 response by name one to one so that would be setting q2 underscore one to one and as i look at q2 here as well i can see that there's skip logic that's in place i can see that there's a randomization and if i continue i can see that q3 was not fully built out so i'd most likely need to go back to that particular question and update it same goes for q4 uh, q5 only has one response option so it probably needs a no so i can go into the build and edit tool and update that as well so this particular feature is one of the best value adds to be able to review your survey in every way possible because you've got every single operation that has been programmed in your survey and if anything's missing you can go and update it and then come back and refresh to continue to verify as you see fit Another option that sometimes does show up is, uh, in addition to the invalid setting that we had in this particular logic block, you might get an error. Uh, it usually is preceded by um, three pound signs or hash symbols, uh, again, so that it stands out to you, so that you know that you have to double check that particular logic syntax or scenario. The other option you have within the review outline is to review any other languages or locales that might have been set up. So in theory, if I had programmed the survey also in Portuguese, I can go in, select the Portuguese version of the survey and review it in that language. The other option I have is to click on preview survey. Clicking this option will give you a cleaner version of the review outline which removes all of the logic and some of the formatting so it's a cleaner version which really only has the questions that would appear so here's q1 q2 q3 q4 q5 none of the other information shows up such as the default text which appears at the end of the review outline so if I click on this button again to show the codebook, uh, that's also a secondary name for the review online is codebook. So if you ever heard hear that term, those terms are interchangeable. So if I go back here, here at the bottom is all the variables that have been set up. Most of these are all the system variables created on every single survey by default. And then down here are sample sources and any default text. So this is a very good way to verified text as well too so if somebody comes back to you and says q3 the text is missing or it needs to be updated instead of having to go into the build and edit tool i can come here and verify that so this is a very very useful tool and that is a tour of the review outline to review you should now be able to access the survey testing links and utilize survey testing tools, the menu on the right hand side during testing. This will allow you to test your survey fully and the more you test, the more confidence you'll have that you'll have no errors before you launch your survey.